sometimes you see a new Vanguard card and think this is the best thing ever and you end up being dead wrong. That's why today on Twitter I asked you, what were your worst Vanguard takes when you first saw a new card or a new mechanic? Before all that though, if you still need any Vanguard cards, go to 50cards.shop and use the code SOLEMN. If you still need a beautiful playmat, go to zerodamagegaming.com and use the code SOLEMN. We have this beautiful new Eva mat. A lot of people have in particular been really liking the esports edition, so we've also released a new esports edition of an existing mat. Should we do more of these? Let me know in the comments down below. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So, what are your worst Vanguard predictions slash power interpretations? Now, I also added one of mine. I said, for me, it was when I first saw grade 3 searchers and thought they were sacky and stupid. That's right, I thought these will never catch on. You only check top 5, that's always gonna miss. I was right, these miss often, but they were still good enough to be played. Normal Orphist being better than Regis was a recent one, but I've definitely had worse. I think this was the case for a lot of the new ones. You know, we had like these side grades for Zor for Orphist and so forth and a lot of people thought whoa these are just you know side grades are not that good but turns out a lot of them were pretty good. Shlishma being a super good but super setup reliant stride to be of use in any premium gear chronicle deck. This was before Enterana got revealed. Yeah I mean Shlishma on release didn't seem as insane though still pretty good but then it ended up being actually like <laughs> really solid for Steam Maiden. The most recent grade 2 for Eugene that stops continuous effects for the opponent I thought it would break premium well, it certainly doesn't, I believe. I mean, so far, you know, maybe you'll be right in a year or so. In 2019's VXL meta, I didn't play DI because I thought it couldn't keep up with Murakumo and Pale Moon, despite going first. A week later, I added four number of terror and switched up my playstyle. The deck's win rate shot up tremendously. Now, I will say Murakumo and Pale Moon were definitely stronger than that deck, but yeah, DI could definitely keep up. Echo says this is a classic, but perfect guards are just a neg one. I I cannot imagine anyone actually saying that. If you said that, I'm sorry. When I first started for a week or so, I thought until end of battle effects lasted until the end of the game. Wow. Okay. P pretty good. I didn't like Enterana when it was revealed because it counterblasted. Wow, I mean, you wanted to go plus three without a counter blast? <laughs> this is wild. Mystery Flare was a sacky and gimmicky deck, so therefore consistent Chrono Jet was better. Man, was I wrong. I mean, Mystery Flare was a sacky gimmicky deck, but Chrono Jet definitely wasn't better, that's for sure. Every time I think something will finally make G History Maker in the main deck playable. Yeah, if you want G cards to be playable in the main deck... You might need a time machine. Jokes aside though, it's, it's very rare. There's some decks that can really use, you know, good G cards from back in the day, but it needs to be really, really, really justifiable because the higher base power from D, not being reliant on g generation break, higher shield on the grade ones, higher power and gifts or personas or whatever on the grade threes, all of that are real buffs to the consistency of the deck. Zorga being the best deck in set one standard. I huffed Zorgang Copium so hard on oh, me too i didn't think it was the best deck but i thought you know what i'm gonna have my fun and boy losing isn't fun <laughs> when v luard first released i thought it was just a weaker version of alt mile and wouldn't be higher than tier 2 at best oh yeah i mean it was only tier 0 so that's not a higher number than tier 2 first thing that comes to mind is i thought bull spike bad end would go crazy well i don't think v has ever had a spikes deck go crazy at all so who can blame you. I legitimately thought Eugene would be the best deck. Well, I'm sorry for your loss. Oh, we have another one of this. Steam Maidens wouldn't be better than Chrono Jet. <laughs> How times change. Arno thought Anger Blader is bad. Well, it was limited to one shortly after, so I don't know how bad you were thinking, but taking Premium Riviere to BCS this weekend. Yeah, that's that's not smart. I'm sorry. <laughs> but hey, you wouldn't be the first to bring a pet deck to a BCS and do awful. <laughs> Great nature copium. That over over triggers are not going to be that bad of a problem. Yeah. I mean, many people made this mistake, so uh, you'll be forgiven. What's a bigger issue is that Bushiroad themselves do not see the problem yet. For me, it was during D-Series set 4. I thought Inlet was going to be a trash card. That's a spicy one. Gurgit V looked mid on reveal. Wow, that's the same camp as the Luart person. Maybe you two could be friends. Leonard was a bad card because he had to hit to get value. I was on something with that take. His 
historically on hits have often been bad, so I don't really blame you there. I think it's more so because he's attacking two things at once, and so the on hit is often gonna go off. That That's what really pushes it in my opinion. That clan exclusive over triggers weren't going to be as powerful as two units with 100 million power from the Kray elemental. How wrong I was. Keep in mind this was back when we only knew what the Kray elemental effect one was. Okay, I don't think that's that bad of a take because some decks do get better with the 100 million and who would have thought that they would print batshit insane over triggers like restand your vanguard in dragon empire or all of your rear guards have 10,000 extra power for the rest of the game in lyrical or double your entire board's critical and power like in brandgate like <laughs> i don't really blame you with this one i thought stride was dumb really in my defense i was young i mean there's some people who still have this awful take so the same people who say like oh stride is dumb are the same people who are crying about link monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh. so like you know there's always gonna be people like that ultima wasn't necessary in 2019 as well now that certainly is a take i know some people were just auto winning on you know high rolling and going first but sometimes you go second and then you do in fact need ultima the first time i read v luard i thought it was just bad alt mile man was i wrong hey this is a second person who had this exact same take. So you had the person who thought Gurgit sucked, the person who thought Luart sucked because it's bad alt mile, and now we have a second person who thinks Luart sucked because of it was a bad alt mile. So three of you could really start like a Springfest team of bad V takes. That's pretty cool. I can be your cheerleader as the person who thought Great Three Searchers were bad. Graham Blue, I'd never want to mill my triggers. Now I'm the fool playing Stoikea decks. So the funny part is this is actually a math mistake that a lot of people make. Make. They think, oh, if I mill my deck, that decreases my odds of hitting triggers. That isn't actually true, though. And you learn this when you take statistics in, you know, school at any point. If you take, like, a deck of cards and you remove the top amount of cards and you have to guess what the top card is, your odds of hitting Ace of Spades didn't actually decrease as long as you didn't look at the cards, technically. Because those three could have been any. So you could have gotten rid of the Ace of Spades, but every time you would have gotten rid of the Ace of Spades, if you did this a billion times, you also got deep to the ace of spades and so yeah technically you milling should not be decreasing the odds of hitting triggers because just as often you will be hitting normal units and so forth i had a short period of time where i thought god hand would make a good nova grappler aggro premium deck i have no comment on this one i thought over triggers were balanced being only one per deck ah i see another one of those well that's where they get you you think oh it's one per deck so it's one in 50 but you actually have many 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 chances per game game to hit the 1 in 50. So while it's 1 in 50, if you wanted to turn this into like a die with 50 sides and you have like, oh, hit the 1 and you auto lose, you're like, oh, it's 1 in 50. But if you roll that die 20 times, you're gonna auto lose pretty often. I thought Link Joker was gonna be a protect clan when I first heard about it. Uh, me too. So I don't think this is a bad take. I think this is just Bushiroad being weird. Morfessa's Ritual 10 took too much setup to be viable. Oh boy, was I fucking wrong. To be fair, the first builds that we saw from Luar for Morfessa didn't hit Ritual 10 quickly. You really had to loop noise with Cursed Eye Raven, which is something almost no one was doing. I think Benjamin Thaver did that in the WGP or something. Then I did that for my Springfest Cardiff, which we then ended up winning. And only after that did Morfessa become like this instant first try type of deal. Now, of course, by now we have like all these millers and stuff like that. So now it's really easy. But previously you were giving up your entire hand just to reach that Ritual. 10 assuming your opponent instantly rode up surely brilliant blister couldn't save mega colony to be fair brilliant blister on its own didn't but yeah it did push order colony over the edge my goofy ass really read enterana and gear cat on the announcement rubbed my eyes and said man why are these cards so mid little did i know that these would just make the deck tier zero and i'm just a clone and i'm a fucking gear player yikes it's okay there's a big gang of people who are uh, very into chrono jet and think anything not chrono jet that sucks and uh you're you're part of that gang now nothing wrong with that thinking prism was whatever on release well it wasn't whatever <laughs> Gavrail on release was garbage, had no kill potential. That is certainly a take. When V Gavrail released, I thought they were weak and would never be meta. Hey, you two can literally be friends, hey. You're you're literally together, go ahead. Thinking Zarzan is not good when I saw the skill. Man, how wrong I was. To be fair, when I saw Zarzan, I thought it was gonna be the less powerful of the two compared with the order. Now, of course, they ended up both being banned, so <laughs> we weren't that far off. But yeah, Zarzan is very deceptive in how broken it is. During their first 
first reveal, I thought overtriggers were going to be just as impactful as any trigger in the game. Turns out I was wrong. Again, a lot of people thought this. Any deck that soul charges. <laughs> That's right. So for context, uh, Sage was uh, trying some DI and turns out DI tends to brick a little from time to time. Zarzan is fine. It's Cycloned that's the problem card. Well, that is certainly a take. We have Noto saying DI and getting 14 likes and 4 retweets. Well, you and Sage can once again join a little gang of Copium. Crit Sentinels are gonna be meta. Personally, I did think Crit Sentinels would be played more than they are, but it turns out hitting a draw PG is just broken. So these were some of your bad takes. If you want to take part in any of these weird videos in the future, go follow me on Twitter at MaximSolemn. I at least found this very enjoyable. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this. If you need any Vanguard cards, go to 50cards.shop, use the code SOLEM. If you need a beautiful playmat, zerodamagegaming.com, use the code SOLEM. And if you want to take your Vanguard skills to the next level, you can get the Vanguard Mastery course at the link in the description. I will see you soon. Ciao.